Near the heart of sunny Los Angeles, dark mysteries bubble to the surface. This is the infamous La Brea Tar Pits, home to the Page Museum, and resting place to thousands of prehistoric creatures, each with a tale to tell. Around 40,000 years before this area became a jungle of asphalt, the stuff was seeping out of the ground. Maybe covered over by leaves and dirt, so the animals didn't actually know it was there, but it was very sticky, and so the animals got caught like flies on flypaper. If they were lucky, uh, they'd die in a week or 10 days from hunger and thirst. And uh, if they were unlucky, then it would come the saber-toothed cats and the direwolves to feed on this helpless resource. And the direwolves and the saber-toothed cats would in turn get, get stuck. And then down would come the vultures to feed on them and they would get stuck. So this was a terrible way to die. Inside the museum's fossil lab, the grim residue was washed away. It's sticky business. But even tiny details can provide clues as to what life was like during the last ice age. Take the case of Wolfgang the Dire Wolf. Of all the giant sloths in all of the LA basin, Wolfgang went after this one, and he paid the price. But damage to his skull reveals that before he ever set foot in that fateful tar pit, Wolfgang led a hard knock life. He's got a pathology all the way around as if he got taken a hold of and shaken. All of this bone shows signs of infection. It kind of healed over and actually occurred quite a while before he got stuck in a tar pit. Injuries like this would have been fatal for a loner. But this wolf was part of a pack whose tight social code protected him while he healed and allowed him to feed at kill sites. Not every creature passed away in the asphalt. This big fellow was Zed. Zed's dead. But a tar pit wasn't the culprit. He was found in a, a, a river channel with lots of, of, of mollusks. So it looked as though he died in the stream bed. And asphalt leached into his bones after he died. By scrutinizing his skeleton and comparing it to modern-day elephants, paleontologists have plenty of clues as to how he got there, starting with the wear on his teeth. At the time of his death, he, he was about um, 48 to 52 years old. His vertebrae show signs of arthritis. He would had uh, broken ribs that had healed. A typical injury from brawling with other mammoths. And we could tell by looking at his tusks um, that in fact he actually died in uh, the early summer and there were no fresh breaks on, on his skeleton so it looks as though he probably died from soft tissue injuries at, uh, as a result of conflict during the mating season. A lover turned fighter that probably took one too many blows. Skeletons like Zed are rare and impressive but more and more it's the tiny specimens that provide revelations on a grand scale. Take the case of the two beetles. We saw some traces from one of our deposits uh, that were reminiscent of the traces left by domestic beetles. When you prepare skeletons um, in a museum, usually you put the, the carcass in a, a colony of domestic beetles and the larvae eat the flesh and, and, and you end up with a skeleton. But if you don't, renew the skeletons, then they'll, they'll actually start eating the bones as well. But not all of the traces were made by the Dermestid beetle. And it turns out that many of the other traces were actually made by Tenebrionid beetles. Here's where the plot thickens. And because uh, the, the Tenebrionid beetles and the Dermestid beetles aren't there at the same time, they're there sequentially. Now the other interesting thing is that these beetles, the larvae, are only functional when the temperature is above 65 degrees. Uh, Fahrenheit. So this enabled us to, to actually build up a picture of, of how long the bones were above the ground before they got immersed in, in the tar. And so th there was 17 weeks of the summer where, <laughs> where the temperature was above 60 degrees, uh, which is not what you think about when you think about the Ice Age. The climate obviously fluctuated and the, the, the seats are probably only active in the warmer episodes of the last ice age. 
And so, the cold case of how and when the tar pits claimed most of its victims just got a hot lead. There are a million more stories like these in the tar pits, just waiting to be dug up. And while the beginning is always dark, each sheds a little more light on the history of this town.